Awesome. Thank you so much, Felicia. So they've got a lot of great resources uh, for you. So you definitely want to take advantage. We'll be sending out uh, some information following the webinar today. Um, did want to highlight that this is a two-part series. So we're talking all about CRM today. And in two weeks, same time on March 9th, we are actually going to be doing uh, a webinar on how to uh, master the art of the close and perfect your sales process. So we'll uh, make sure that you guys all have the information on that if you want to join us as well. Uh, now we are going to hand it over to Simone Ashkar. She is our uh, VP and one of our senior uh, business advisors at Cultivate, and she will be uh, she will be talking everything CRM today. So Simone, I will pass it over to you. Awesome, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, I'm excited to join you guys uh, virtually here and uh, work through some CRM. So. Just to kind of set the stage a little bit for uh, what to expect today, uh, we are going to look kind of at why have a CRM. Uh, so thank you for all the input you uh, you attached when you were registering. It helped us be able to kind of curate some of the content, uh, which I'll get to in here in a bit. But we're going to kind of talk about that, uh, why to have a CRM. But then I'm, I'm going to kind of get some group involvement. So what my hope is, is that you guys can be a bit interactive here with answering some questions and writing down uh, some information to help you get ready for CRM or uh, reinforce what kind of CRM you're working with. And so we're just going to go through kind of seven questions to ask yourself to set up the right CRM. And then that a lot of times dovetails to, hey, what is the budget supposed to be? How sh much should I be spending? Uh, so I want to talk about some, um, some good ways to look at that, to look at your individual businesses to, to, to determine a budget. And then just to make things easy, we've done a lot of the digging uh, and we have a few recommendations. And so I'm going to show you how we're going to lay those out. And hopefully it'll just save you a bunch of time uh, to be able to organize for yourself. So that's what we're going to do today in terms of uh, that. And really what I hope that you can come out of this with is just understanding the importance of a CRM in order to use it for your business. So I really want to connect those dots. I also want to make sure that you answer those seven questions because it should help you find the right CRM uh, when the time is right for your business. Uh, be clear on what's the budget uh, for your business. So we're going to go through a bit of an exercise there. And then you'll be able to walk away with a real list uh, that has all the content, which I'll walk through. So that's what I'm really focused on today. So just to set the stage of expectations before we dive in, uh, the chat, uh, which all of you guys have found by uh, putting where you're in uh, or where you're at. So I'm glad to see that we got people from, from all over. Uh, feel free to put in kind of your best practices. If you do have a CRM already going, if you do uh, have some good shortcuts yourself, the more information out here, the better. So uh, please don't hesitate. And then just know that after the, the webinar, I know I move fast. We only got a little bit of time together. We are going to give you access to all the slide decks that has all the information as well as some toolkits. So if you miss something writing, it's okay. We'll get it to you. And then if you have specific questions, uh, go ahead and in the, in the chat, you can move it to a private chat or you can just go to Stephanie. She's going to answer the questions. I can't quite multitask all the time reading the questions as well as uh, facilitating here. So she'll either lob some questions at me at the end, or we'll make sure that we document them and get them to you individually uh, for your questions. So just to kick things off, to make sure that we get a little bit of involvement uh, from everybody here, what I would love to start uh, and understand is how many people on this call actually are currently using a CRM? And so if you are using a CRM, it would be really helpful if you just put it in the chat so that we can understand just where our baseline is starting today. And as you do this, uh, we're going to also, I think uh, Stephanie is going to uh, lodge something just so I can get a little understanding from the people that did show up. If we do have people who are more uh, in uh, a B2C world or a B2B world. So she's going to go ahead and log uh, that uh, poll right now. And if you can answer that, that'd be super helpful. Um, so just a very simple question. Are you business to business or are you business to consumer? Just so we can understand uh, kind of where we're headed here uh, for the next uh, about 40 minutes together. So those two things, as you get those polls going, I just want to make sure I cover who Cultivate is. Uh, we know that some of you guys know exactly who, you are, who we are, and some of you guys are really probably just who is Cultivate. So we work with small business owners. Uh, that is what our specialty is, and we've done it in a way that we have a better understanding uh, of what CRMs are and why we use them for our clients, because we've worked with over a thousand small businesses, and we've realized that uh, businesses are in different stages at all the time. So you may be on this call as a solopreneur, just having you in the business. And you may be on this call with a bunch of executives in the business that you, uh, you lead a bunch through. So I'm going to make sure that I'm cognizant of that, no matter what stage of the business you are in, 
as we work here today. And one of the big things that I'm going to focus on is uh, thinking through the lens of, of the sales and marketing right now. But this is the engine that we use at Cultivate to just understand how we think as advisors and as a company. So if you were to imagine that as a, as a propeller, what our belief is, is that the financials stem every decision that you make within a business that keeps the business healthy. And you'll see on the right side, you have sales and marketing, and that allows for the growth side. We're going to be pretty focused around that today as a CRM supports that side of the business quite a bit. And then you'll see on the left side that a lot of leadership and recruiting also helps uh, grow kind of the strength of a business with a holisticness. So you'll notice all the black in between is productivity. You got to make the business uh, productive once you have these systems in place. And that's really what we're talking about today with, with technology and uh, utilizing the right CRM. So what, as we dive in, the last thing that I'm going to say is, uh, is these two things. We're going to go from uh, and hit all different spectrums. So if you're sitting here today saying, I don't even know how to select or what a CRM is. We're going to make sure we cover that. And all the way to, hey, I'm using a CRM. Is it the right one? Will this allow me to scale? Uh, you may be up there. So wherever you're at, what I want you to really think about for yourself is that some of this stuff won't be rocket science, but find the points that matter to you. You should be able to take two or three, three things away from today saying, hey, I'm a stronger business owner because I sat down during lunch and actually utilized some of my time for learning. So in 40 minutes, you should be able to take a few things away that says, hey, this is worth my time. So that's what I really want uh, to make sure uh, we start with. So here's what we're going to do. Our action plan for today, I'm going to walk through four steps. One, why have CRM? Two, the seven questions to ask yourself. Three is building your budget. And then four is the selection and recommendations. So that's going to be the order we go through today. And I recommend take some notes, do your best, and we'll, uh, we'll dive in here. So First, I want to just talk about why do you even have a CRM? Like, what is the point as a business owner? And specifically, what, is, what are you going to uh, be working through? So as a business owner, what I got to ask you is, do you ever struggle with client retention? Is your information ever disjointed or unorganized? And do you have to dig through old emails, spreadsheets, or post-it notes uh, before you can even find what you're looking for? Because that's a lot of times what we, what we notice when we start working with businesses. And so that's the starting point of why we start talking about a CRM is really just an organizational system. So very specifically, the point of why we're going to be walking through all this here today and slowing down is because a CRM tool puts the focus on meeting the needs of your customers by using technology to organize and automate the sales, marketing, and customer service component, component of your business. So I want to just slow that down for a second and really think this is about meeting the needs of your customers. And we're going to use technology and automation to help leverage that. And there's a lot of different components that can go with it. But I want you to just think for yourself of, you know, you may be at a stage where this is all about marketing and about front end building the engine. And some of you guys may be in a stage where it's about actually, man, we've talked to so many people, but they're so unorganized. If we just kept be more consistent to them, we could get so much in sales. And you may be in a place where it's like, hey, we just need to make sure that we're focused on these clients we do have, because there's so much opportunity to continue that relationship. If we're organized, we could grow the engagement if we're organized. And it's all about just the consolidation. So it's not all in your head, or even more scary in an employee's head, who could at any point walk away from the business and take all of that uh, with them. So that is why we're talking about really a centralized system to be able to, to simplify and organize your needs as a business owner to get to whatever growth objectives you want to have. And the growth may be around time, just getting less time in the business. It may be around financials of growing the business to a bigger sum, or it may be about just being able to take the sales and marketing off your plate or the customer service off your plate, because you're going to start hiring people and you need to be organized for them. So whatever your stage of the business is today, I want you to look through that lens as we walk through this uh, content together. So that is why we are going to be focused and why you need a CRM is if you're in any of these pain points or opportunities within your business. So here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, if you have a piece of paper or if you're typing on notes, I'm going to just walk through a couple questions uh, that I want you to think about when it comes to a CRM. So this is my idea of slowing down to speed up. A lot of times we can click on the most snazzy new CRM or the best marketed or branded CRM. 
But if it doesn't actually fit your needs as a business owner, a lot of times we see it go to the wayside. So some of you guys may relate that you've bought something nice or something fancy, but it's not that fancy or nice if you never use it. That's why we're going to slow down here today and actually look and say, hey, are we making the right decision uh, for your business? So the first question I always ask business owners when looking at a CRM is, what problems are you looking uh, to solve through a CRM system? So what are the tools or what do you need? What is, the, what is the solve? And so not all CRMs are built the same. Some are more client focused, where others are more sales focused. So is it time? Is it scalability? Is it just ease uh, of organization? What is your objective? And it's for today, as well as you want to think about that vision of where you want the business to be in one, three, five years from now, you want to be thinking through each of those steps for yourself. So really, what are you trying to solve? So I'll give you a second just to think about that because we're just going to keep building off of that. So the second question that I'd have for you is what do you need your CRM tool to track? And it may be a bit simple, it may be a bit complex, but it's about being sure that we're, uh, we're hitting the importance or the needs of your business specifically. So when you think through this, are you tracking for today? Are you trying to track for the future? Especially if you're in a consumer-based business, one of the things that I often see is that if you don't capture the information accurately right now, you know, even if they're not ready for something, in three to five years, they may be ready for it. Are you ready to go back to them? Are you thinking through not just now, but in the future for yourself and the growth of your business? So always be thinking through, you know, what do you need it to actually track? What information is most uh, important now in the business and in the future of the business? So I'll give you a second here to write that down. So hopefully now you know what problems you're looking to solve and then what are the need, uh, what do you need to track? So if you know what the problems are and what information needs to be tracked, the next piece of uh, being a business owner is to think about your level of expertise or your experience with a CRM. So when you think about using a software, first, I would just think really easy for yourself. Am I good at using a software or not? Does the idea of Googling things or going on Facebook or going on any of those other platforms of, uh, of social media, is that tricky for me or is that easy for me? Because that does have a component that's important to be looking at for a CRM for yourself as a business owner, as well as you want to be thinking through the, the, your experience because if you are hiring or you're running employees, that is also really important because it's very different to have an employee who is an hourly business or hourly uh, a worker have expectations to work through a system than somebody that maybe you're paying an executive salary to where you'd have different expectations of their experience and familiarity with a CRM. So think through those layers, depending on wherever you fall on your spectrum. And what you want to think to yourself is just uh, if it's more complex or you have a, a complexity uh, that's uh, for yourself, just understand that you may have to dial it back and create the training then that goes into it. So it may not be something you can implement tomorrow if you're going to use a complex system. If it's going to be a simple system, you still need training, but you may be able to, to use it quicker because that's going to affect your timeline and whatever the needs you have or the problems you're trying to solve. So just think about your level and what your employees' levels are. So now you should have a fairly good baseline of the problems, what you're trying to track and solve, and what your comfort level is when it comes to technologies, whether that's technology in general or CRMs in general. Because now you should be operating off of some sort of baseline that's going to help us for the future when I show you a bunch of options uh, that you can walk through. So then next, which we're going to look at here, is we're going to look at the integration. Okay, So what so, uh, software systems are currently in use that could work for a CRM? So a lot of, a lot of uh, the build of the business, you're using different platforms or different things that may connect uh, throughout your business. We want to be cognizant of those. So it's not about figuring out which ones work for them. I just want you to create the list. What are the current softwares you're using in your business? 
because it's going to be really important to identify those. If we overlook those and get two systems that don't talk, you're going to be managing more than if you just were keeping it probably in your head. So create the list of what software systems are you using right now? Because uh, you want to think about that as it dovetails into the CRM specifically. And the reason why I say that is kind of to play off our next question here, which is, uh, are you tied to these programs or these softwares? Because the last thing we want to do is get a CRM because we have another software, but then we decide we hate that software and then we get a new software because then we have a CRM that we probably hate because it was based on a software we don't like. And now the new one doesn't talk to the CRM. So this is a great time to kind of build it, uh, kind of break things down to build them back up and identify, hey, are these softwares working for my scale or what I need for the business? And if not, take a look at your softwares first before the CRM itself. So some examples that uh, I will go into too is just something as simple as, do you use Outlook or do you use G Suite? Those are two things I think about often because they're different ways to organize. Same thing with Dropbox, uh, because if you've ever tried to use Dropbox in Google, uh, it doesn't really work very well of integration. These are the same uh, things. You may be using a, um, a internal uh, software with uh, counting. You may be using it around just uh, uh, productivity. So like if you're using a, a Trello or if you're using different types of, um, um, of different softwares that way, just listing them, they may not be relevant to your CRM, but they may become relevant depending on the complexity of what you choose. So you should have like a technologies list of like all the technology I use in my business uh, with things. So another one's like, you can book me, some people use, uh, uh, or any kind of platforms for your scheduling. It's another good one, uh, to be thinking about just list the, the technologies so that you can be aware when you're looking at them for the future. So the big one that I always say, because I think this is one of the toughest ones or the easiest ones, uh, uh of, uh, an example is just like, uh, does your company currently run off of something like G Suite where, you have all the integration already in where your mail is connected to all of your Google Sheets and your slides, as you can probably see, we are a Google Suite company. So that uh, played a big role in our decision on a CRM. So something like ProsperWorks is the specific one that uh, Google uh, works directly with and integrates really nicely. So if you do have a bigger system you are already using, there's already a list that's already uh, created that's going to probably be easiest for you to integrate a CRM to. So again, it's just about making sure that we pick the right one based on what you currently have. And then thinking about what you currently have, is that what you like? Because if not, you should start there, get the software as you like, and then bolt on the CRM to it uh, with things. And so, yes, yeah, sorry, I always uh, call, call it wrong. It is copper. Uh, I just saw that in the, in the chat that way of uh, either way. So, the last question then that I always think about is just what's the budget? So do you have a budget? Do you need to create a budget? Are you trying to even understand what you're supposed to be charging or uh, expecting for yourself in a business uh, per user? So I just want you to think about it. If you have it, great. Otherwise, you can probably imagine my next step here is actually to walk through how to budget. But I just wanted to put that as a, a create, uh, starting to create a bumper for yourself. So money is important. Some people have it right now to spend. Some people don't. Doesn't mean you can't stay organized through the whole process. And then especially if you're in the midst of growing, especially in the early phases of the business, understand that you may change in the future what your CRM is. And that's okay. You may start with a free version and evolve from there. But at least I want you making a decision knowing what you're doing to move forward. So... That's the questions I want to hopefully get your head around when it comes to just thinking about SERM, because now what I want you to uh, make sure that we are clear on is just how do you build a budget around a CRM? And this is going to be individual for everybody, but it's probably fair to say or to think about where does pricing even start in terms of just creating a health check for the business? So I just like to put this as, a, a, uh, as an easy bumper is that, you that it's an average spending of a CRM is anywhere between 50 to $100 per user. It's kind of the bumper that we use in the small business world. 
Does that mean you can get one for free? Yes. Does it mean that if you have a bunch of fancy stuff you add into it, it can be more? Yes. But if you were just to put a baseline right now of what could you expect, this is kind of where um, uh, to think about. And then you want to think about um, how do you know if you can actually do this? So I'm going to kind of break that down uh, next. But yes, that's $50 to $100 a month that you can expect per user to spend. And again, you could work up to that, but if you're budgeting for the future and you're starting to look towards future stuff, this is a good way to say, okay, I need to figure out how I can imagine spending $50 on the organization uh, to things, which is what we're gonna go into next. So the best way that I can always uh, work through this with business owners is identifying the return on investment. So we have to know what the ROI of this software is which is something you should be doing for just about any decision you make as a business owner, but hopefully this will help uh, break it down. I'm gonna put it in three categories. And I'm hoping one will speak to you. So my first category that I always think about is just time when I'm thinking about the ROI of figuring out a CRM. So how much time do you or your staff take manually tracking the current information you have? And so if you're like, I have no idea, that's a great place to start. Take a week, take a couple of weeks and actually track how much time you spend or if your staff is spending on doing this. Because right now it may not hurt because you're doing it yourself, but your time needs to be scaled eventually. As well as if your employees are doing it, it'll probably go into, it'll kind of dovetail into my next point here. But you can probably imagine that if you're employees are spending so much time doing this. And if 25% of their job is just manually doing things, could you imagine if we took that 25% down to five and you opened up 20% capacity of opportunity for them to be doing the sales actually or doing the outreach, uh, you can start shifting the impact and, um, and the capacity lines of your people. So that's what I want you to think about why we track time. And if you're saying, hey, okay, maybe the time's tracked, well, then I want you to think about just how much are you or, an or your employee worth each hour? Because if you know how much time you're spending and you know how much per hour you're worth, it's going to start giving you bumpers to know how much it is it going to change if you automate and get a system down. So again, we just want to identify some bumpers to make sure that you're clear. And if it's not around the money or the time, I just want you to think about the people orientation of things. And you can always think to yourself, how many more clients do I need to bring in each month to justify a spending? So if we put the bumpers around 50 to 100 bucks, how many additional clients would you need in order to support that cost? Because that can kind of start helping you tr uh, track back and say, is that realistic to spend or not? Because if you are able to free up some time, can you even achieve that? Or is this gonna be a, a different conversation of what you're actually trying to solve? But these are my three bumpers that I'm looking at. And usually when I walk through one of these with a business owner, we can kind of figure out a sweet spot that justifies a cost because it's important or builds a budget for the future. And when you have that decision as knowing what your ROI is, historically I've seen that people feel better about uh, investing in it. Same thing goes that if you know that you're going to be spending 150 bucks or whatever it is with a one user, it probably will help you to get some buy-in to say, I can't just throw this aside. I'm actually going to be spending about, you know, a little over a thousand, uh, 1100 bucks, 1200 bucks a, a year with an employee to be having this system. I expect it to be used because it's real money I'm spending. Same thing with you to connect the dots, which is why sometimes it's, it's uh, important to just slow down and walk through this. Because once you have it, there's either gonna be two things you're doing. If you, have a built, if you already have budgets in place, you're gonna budget for this for the future. And if you're like, I don't have a budget, I need to create one. Now you have the, the, the building blocks to say, okay, I need to get to this many sales or I need to get rid of this much time or I need to do this in order to build it into a budget moving forward. So you may have to be building it in and getting to the line of comfort, and you may just need to be implementing it so that you are accurate on your PLs for the future. Either way, it's about accountability and accounting for it as a really important process here. 
So hopefully, if we look at through this point, you've started thinking about some of the important needs or problems you're trying to solve. Hopefully, then you start thinking about, hey, what are some of the key uh, tracking items I need in a CRM? And then you think about, hey, what are some of the, the complexities that I have? Am I a simple, need a simple system? Do I need a complex system? How much do I trust of this? And then you think about to yourself, hey, what is the budget that I need to create? Or what's the budget I just need to reserve in order to make this happen? Because this fourth and final step is something that uh, I'm gonna make fairly easy, knowing that we're gonna be on a pretty short timeline here together uh, and make sure that I have some, a pretty good um, action list or a tool to give you guys to actually walk through everything. So this then comes to the selection and recommendations. So I always start here and I say that if you're in a specific niche industry or you have something very, very unique that you need uh, uh, for a CRM system, one of the best things you can always do is just put into Google, what is the best CRM for X industry? You always get a top 10 list to knock down, which will help just at least identify it. Unfortunately, a lot of times it doesn't always do the hard work for you, but if you're really feeling that there's a specific one you need or you wanna be really intentional for your industry, great. But otherwise, this is kind of how my process usually works. We've now worked with uh, a ton of businesses, so we've just gone through and done a lot of this data. So we're giving you the data through our eyes, and I just wanna make sure I'm clear on what is our lens of doing this. So we've worked with about a thousand business owners. So this is about always making sure one of our foundational things is building budgets and then building efficiencies. So we have, uh, I would say probably about 80% of our clients at a minimum have a CRM. And these are just some of our learning blocks that we've gone through uh, and building the list. So to help hopefully uh, you in the future. So we've definitely learned from mistakes and oversights and we've definitely learned from successes to create more efficiencies. I also just wanna say that these, this list is curated in order to understand what a solopreneur is going through, as well as if you have an executive team of leaders uh, to be using. So top down or uh, however you wanna look at it, we're looking at it through that lens. We also understand that products and services can be simple and they can be complex. So we understand that we need to be really cognizant when we're looking through that lens and that we understand that budgets can be a big determinant of this. So. What we're going to do here after this is send you a more complex list. The list is going to be looking like this when it comes to you. And so it's very small, I assume, on your screen. Don't worry. It's a lot more user-friendly when you open it in Excel. But here's what we've done on an individual basis for CRMs and a few other systems of technology to make your life easy. We've tried to figure out all the features for these. We've tried to figure out the integrations. So if you're saying, hey, what does it integrate to or how does this work? We've done some of that lifting for you. We figured out some of the pricing. We've also just attached videos so you can actually just plug and play to actually watch how it works. So that helps you on your complexity and like, what's my experience within these? Uh, these are links that you can just go right to the demonstrations or the demos of everything to make it easy. And then some additional training and resources. So if you have employees, that you want to figure out if they're going to be able to, if you're going to be able to train this, you can go ahead and click on these links. So this goes from everything from a, um, a HubSpot, which you can get for free, and then all the way to uh, some of the other ones. So we're going to get you this list here at the end. But some of you guys, as we're walking through this, what I want you to think about when you're looking at the problems may go beyond just a tracking of sales or marketing problem. And it may have things to do with your integration, your software problems. So what I want to make sure I do on this list is back into a few other things that may help because you may say, hey, it's actually just a marketing problem CRM that I'm trying to figure out. So we've broken those out to be a little bit more specific for you. Uh, it may be an accounting issue uh, and actually it's a financial. It may be a CRM that you actually need to uh, hook up in different ways. So I've tried to break down the list to be a bit more encompassing to make things uh, easier for you. But what I've learned is that usually if you have a list to pick from, once you identify your needs, you can move quicker as a business owner versus going into the deep dark web and trying to find the million suggestions that it will give you to simplify this down uh, to make things easy. Um, so the action plan here and what I'm going to work through is just to be informed and, uh, and uh, to get informed and, and uh, confident here is I want you to think through these easy steps. Why do you need a CRM? Have you answered the questions that you need in order to pick 
and, and identify what your persona for a CRM is. And then make sure you're smart on your budget. You either need to build towards a budget or you already have one that you have to implement in your financials before you pull the trigger. And then go to the selection. So a lot of you probably want to just go right to the fancy one. I want you to slow down. I want you to back up. I want you to make sure it's intentional. And then I assure you, it's not that hard to pick a CRM once you've done the heavy lifting. Because if you just start taking demos everywhere, I assure you all of them will make sure they sit down with you and tell you why theirs is the perfect one, which will probably start making you think, oh yeah, that's probably what I need versus you saying, no, 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 here's my list. These are the exact needs I need. If they don't hit these deal breakers, I can't use this CRM because if it's not helpful, I know I'll just throw it to the wayside. So we all know that that's usually what happens if it's not actually feasible and helping us be more efficient with our time. So these are the four building blocks to always pick kind of your CRM uh, in terms of things. So you may say to yourself, okay, that was great. How am I supposed to retain or keep up with anything you said, Simone? And I understand that. Uh, so here's what we're going to do to just make your life a little bit easier. We're going to keep it simple. We will send you this deck. So you have the questions and I'll send you the fancy Excel that has all of the links attached. So you can dive into what's most specific for you. Uh, so if you want that, we are ready to help you and just give you that. That was part of what we wanted to make sure was nice and easy. The second one, then what we can do is we'll give you some additional resources. So some stuff that doesn't necessarily come just with the deck but we'll give you a little bit more in-depth knowledge because you may need some more support if this is your first time deciding on a CRM. So again, from experience to a little bit shakier. Um, and then if you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about or I cannot even fathom how to make a budget, how am I supposed to make these questions or this big decision for yourself? What we've worked with uh, uh, in terms of creating is just making sure we open up some time as a company to slow this down for you. So if you're like, I need some help in general, figuring out how to even create all of this stuff. One of the perks of why we wanted to uh, make sure that we partnered and we're intentional with, uh, with, the, with this webinar is to open up some time to say, hey, we may not be able to get everything over a lunch for you, but what we can do is provide you the resources and the support if needed. So if you would like to spend a little bit of time with an advisor to figure out what the right CRM system is for your specific business, First, the general overview of things, we're happy to do that. And what Stephanie is going to do is she's just going to throw up a poll that's going to allow you to just select uh, which one you would like. And if you want all three, no problem. If you just want one, go ahead and do that um, uh, with things. So that should be coming up here momentarily. And as I do that momentarily, I just want to also go into what's next, because what we're going to do is we're going to uh, come back in about, uh, I guess, two weeks, two, three weeks here. And we're going to be talking about how that CRM kind of builds off to the next stage, which is perfecting your sales process and mastering the art of closing. So what we've realized is that when people start getting a lot of information uh, aggregated, it's about actually utilizing that information to go build the business. So we're going to kind of create a part two of the series to keep things nice and organized and moving forward uh, with a baseline uh, around sales and focus on the growth of businesses. So uh, if you do select uh, the, the slide deck from this webinar, the uh, list of all the CRMs will absolutely come with all that uh, as a way to slow down so it doesn't feel pressure of me giving you a bunch of lists of uh, different CRMs right now. So, but I want you to think about here and hopefully what you've captured in our short amount of time together is pretty simple. What are the one or two things that you need to go do in order to feel confident about picking a CRM? If you're already thinking to yourself, I was already at that stage, I just need that list to be able to do. My other uh, piece of advice is to go schedule in your calendar a couple, couple hours uh, of time to be able to actually do the proper research to make sure your deal breakers are established and you're really confident in what CRM to pick moving forward. So you have a bunch of confidence uh, in your selection as this is an important piece of the business for growth. So what we're gonna do here, we're going to keep things pretty simple. Uh, I wanted to make sure I kept about 10 minutes open here to, to end the call of any kind of specific questions you have in order to make sure that, uh, that we utilize those. So I think a few of them are coming in. Stephanie, it may be easiest if you have a couple that are lingering to shout out to me. And then if people are feeling good that if they get the deck, if you get the Excel that has all the different options, you're going to feel good. Awesome. Uh, if you want to uh, we'll stick around and actually ask specific questions too. 
which will allow you hopefully to get uh, a little bit more curated content for your business. So that's all I wrote. I hope to see you here in about three weeks then or two weeks uh, to build off the sales. And I hope that some of these resources that we're able to give you will allow you to actually pick the proper CRM to stay organized, be budget friendly, and also allow yourself some time to maximize the growth within your business. So thank you, thank you. And I will stick around here for specific questions. Awesome, thank you so much, Simone. Um, first, I wanna to backtrack to Virginia's question. And Virginia, if you want to come off mute, you can, but you had asked, what about on the B2C side, serving remarketing ads, triggering emails, et cetera. I think that was in response to Simone talking about the price of CRMs, but do you wanna clarify? Just in general, um, what are some of the um, things to think about uh, in terms of integration work? And then also, what are some of the CRMs that cater to this, that sort of thing more? So um, what sometimes is helpful for me, I'm just going to give a visual here to think about, and I think I'll answer it through this lens of things, is like when it comes to the softwares that you usually will start uh, you, like that you have in terms of your list within the business. What I always say is there's probably a software you use for each of your engine or each of the pieces. So you probably have some sort of financial uh, tracking software. You probably have some sort of then uh, the sales and marketing software. And so the sales may be a more client orientated. The marketing may be more uh, going out seek to find. So there may be two in that. And then if you do do recruiting, you'll probably have a different software for that. So these are my big lenses that I do looking through and say, do I have a software for each of these pieces to make at least a list of that? Because those are usually my bulk couple that I then decide on what's going to be the link system, because I got to pull all the names of everybody I talk to and all those things to make one central kind of like um, kind of brain to everything. Those are my big lens I'd look through. And then we've got in the chat, everybody's talking about Salesforce, Simone, just on, on you know, the thoughts for small business. Corey mentioned that he's used it in past companies as have I, but for his small business and what we've talked about, you know, in Cultivate is that it's, it's just not a good price point for small businesses is what we found. But do you have any thoughts on Salesforce? For sure. Uh, you know, this goes to the, what are the needs uh, within the business? So where I've seen Salesforce, let's say I'm going to start with where it's been really helpful is that you may have a higher um, uh, like acquisition per client where it would justify the spend, which is where you look at your ROI and say, hey, is this, if I get one more customer uh, because I'm using it through this lens, it could make sense. So I do know some small businesses that do do it, but as a general theme, I've not often seen people pick Salesforce as their first CRM. Because usually you'll realize that when you're getting to the tail end of your growth, you need something much more curated, which is where Salesforce is really helpful, but they are expensive. So I usually don't see it as a first one. And I see it when it becomes very specific where you have a higher um, lifetime value of clients or you have a bigger um, uh, margin of clients that it sometimes can be useful to use through Salesforce. Otherwise, um, I think they're more mid-market tailored. And then uh, Felicia had actually asked how many people start with HubSpot free and have to upgrade to the paid version. And then Gina was kind of piggybacking off of that saying, is it, is it worth getting set up with a free system or do most of them quickly hit a point where you have to pay anyways? It's a good question. Um, I would say that I usually talk about it in the, the idea of like, how overwhelmed are you with the organization right now and how much time are you spending? Because if you're like, you know, this would be a nice luxury to start with to see if I like it. That's why I like the free, because you probably won't uh, break the free system uh, of doing it that way. But if you are uh, talking about multiple people within your business starting to use this, uh, you'll probably break it pretty quickly with, uh, with, with needing multiple people. So if you're brand new, when you start it, if you actually are using it a lot, it's probably going to give you enough of a runway to actually grow your clients, which then will justify the, the spend. If you are existing and, you've are, and you're trying to switch over to something and go back, you're probably going to have to spend it anyways. So I would say it's a good starting point, but yes, yeah, so you usually just like anything. Uh, it's hard to imagine that people just give things away fully for free uh, is how I think about it, which is why you just need to know what your ROI is to justify the spend. 
And then Gina also asks, are there specific CRMs that you recommend for crossing over B to C and B to B? It's a good question. Um, well, I'm gonna first just open it up to make things easy. If anybody has B2B and B2C clients that you have one, that's really good. I would just throw it in the, in the chat box just to help uh, give some tangibles. Um, but I you see it less in that need of, of what the product or service is and more on the needs of the business. So I still use the, like, the philosophy of like, what are you trying to solve? And like, then when you're trying to solve that, what is the most important information being captured that you must get to help you in a business, which then gets you to who's using this software in terms of justifying this spend. And whether it goes B2B or B2C, that's just a, 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 an organization system, which I don't think is that unique. I think everyone is generally designed to do it. And then Virginia, you asked is part of what you offer integrating systems do the CRM systems themselves offer that service? Are you talking about Cultivate? Is that what we offer? Or is that what the CRM? Yeah, is? what Cultivate is that part of your service? Um, integrating, helping with integration of the different uh, databases. It's a good question. Uh, you would not want us to integrate, uh, just in terms of our spend and our price point. But there are really there are pe uh, people who do this for a living of integrations that can do it at a lot less of a expense than what you would uh, do it through us. But what we can be really helpful with is getting all the information aggregated and organized and also communicate uh, the expectations so that we can be a bit of a, a project manager if this is very overwhelming to you. Uh, or if you're doing it with employees to integrate it, that's usually where we find more of our sweet spot. You don't want us doing the technical work. We're, it just doesn't make any sense. We would never recommend that for our ROI working with you. Ken, good point. <laughs> Ken, uh, yeah. Ken pointed out that um, most CRM companies do offer some some services to help you do the integrations. So. Yep. And so it's just about getting the information organized, knowing what you need actually integrated and how fast you need it integrated. Because a lot of stuff you may not need until you know, a year from now or two years from now, it's all just dependent on what your uh, individual needs are in the business. Awesome. Uh, did I answer the general questions here, Stephanie? You did so far. Anybody else have any questions uh, that they would like to get answered? We got two more minutes or so. Otherwise, we will be free to let you guys get on with your day. And then I will be sharing uh, the information based on what everybody requested. I think that might be it, Simone. Perfect. If you guys have questions afterwards that you didn't get answered, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you have my contact information and I will, uh, I'll will i follow up with the resources as well. Thank you for your time. Hopefully you grabbed a couple nuggets here to keep moving forward and please make sure you plan before you buy. That's my biggest uh, piece of advice to leave here. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Simone. Thank you. That was great. Great. Thank you, everybody.